Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to ProCraft. It is my pleasure to bring you MVP's Fairy, which I believe is a Smurf account for MVP of some description. He's in the red trunks and he is playing Zerg to the northeast of this map, which is, of course, the Shakuras Plateau, versus his opponent, Team Liquid's Hero. Using the OGS tag, as you can see. He is in the blue trunks and he is playing Protoss to the northwest. Koreans are very odd when it comes to their smurfing. Uh, they smurf more so than anyone else, and I believe it's mostly just to hide strategies and things like that from other players. Seems to work fairly well, because almost all of the replays that I've got for this exclusive ProCraft pack have been against Korean smurfs of some description. So that makes things a little bit interesting. I have no idea who this guy could actually be. It's a mystery. I had a look on Liquipedia. It's like, is there a player called... Fairy? Well, there was at the start of StarCraft 2, but nothing was really heard from him. And as far as I was aware, far, far as I'm aware at any rate, he is not on MVP's roster. So I, I don't know. It's a mystery player. Whatever the case, if it's got Liquid Hero in it, it's guaranteed to be pretty good. Shakuras Plateau is an interesting map. Forge Fast Expand is very common here, as you can see with the pylon going down to the bottom. That's going to be what happens. Reason for Forge Fast Expand on this map, aside from other obvious things, is that taking the third is... Well, actually, never mind. Taking the ramp. I was going to say taking the third? What? No. Controlling the ramp with cannons and actually defending this ramp and the natural is very, very easy to do. Let's see what here he decides to do. It could be a 15 Forge, which is exactly what it is. There you go. 15 Forge, pretty good timing. Also allows you to uh, get more probes out before you pop your forge down. You shouldn't have to sacrifice anything along those lines. Doesn't mean the cannon is slightly later than, say, something like a 13 or 14 forge, but it's not really a big deal. At this point, MVP's fairy. How do I even say that without sounding insulting? We'll just go with... Just call him fairy, it's fine. Ooh, he'd, he'd love to poke that drone, but no. It's not going to happen. At least he gets away with a few minerals. A little heist going on right here from Hero's Probe. Oh yeah, he's not really under any pressure, and Hero actually is just going to go for a straight-up cannon contain right here. Very nice. He has the ability to do that. And uh, the funny thing is that, well, he does know about it now. It's like, oh, oh, you're building cannons. And that is the complete wall up, I believe. Yep, there is no way out. Right, well, this is going to suck for theory, isn't it? it like, I'm surprised we don't see more of that, honestly. If you can do it, then why the hell don't you? But yeah, there you go. Cancelling that. He's, he's allowed his opponent a small opportunity to actually run past those. So there you go. He just wants those resources back. Doesn't want to waste the 100. And in the meantime, of course, it's expanded behind us. Now, this is a bit stressful, honestly. How do you deal with that? Well, generally speaking, the way that you deal with that is to spread the creep, as you can see right there, and to start using spine crawlers at the top of the ramp. Now, Hero is being particularly sneaky by putting a building at the top of the ramp to allow those photon cannons to actually see. Regardless, the spine crawler does outrange, as you can see. It's got a range of seven, and the cannon, never mind, it actually doesn't. I thought it did. It outranges a bunker. It does not outrange a photon cannon. They have the same range. So if Hero actually has the visibility there, then the spine crawler is going to take a bit of a pounding. However, what he can do with it is move it slightly closer to the pylon to eliminate that, and then he can clean that out. But all the while, ladies and gentlemen, all the while, he's forcing Fairy down an extremely awkward tech path and is denying him a second base, which is never an ideal solution. In fact, what is happening here is that he is going for an incredibly fast lair, and I do mean incredibly fast. He started building this before the five-minute mark, which has already made this game somewhat unusual. There we go, MVP has... Um, fairy. I, I need to not call him MVP, because people are going to get highly confused. It's not MVP Smurf. It is a Smurf from Team MVP. Why did they have to do that? Oh, there you go. Down goes the pylon, and those photon cannon are going to take a free overlord by the looks of it. Ah, down it goes. Nicely done. Almost paid for themselves. Almost. And now the spine crawler's in good position, so unless Hero moves something out of there, he's going to lose 300 resources worth of photon cannons. But does it really matter for that contain to have gone on for so long? Okay, this is starting to get very interesting. A Nidus network. What? Double Nidus? What does it mean? Double Nidus. Coming in from Fairy. Well, if you thought you saw nothing but conventional games on the Korean ladder, nope. Try that one again. An Overlord is in position as well, and I have heard of Nidus used to break contains and things like that. Generally, you don't see double Nidus, however. 
It's going to be Ling Nidus. Has he even actually... He's not even got Metabolic Boost. I suppose he doesn't really need it if he's going to knight us directly into the base, and I'm not sure that Hero is fully prepared to deal with something this ridiculous. Ooh. Hello, here comes the Nidus Worm, and the probe's immediately pulled off, but that's only one Nidus. Where is the second Nidus Worm? Is he... There it is, the second Nidus Worm hidden over there. Hero doesn't see it. Oh my, oh my, that Nidus Worm denied, but there are now Lings in your base. Oh my. How the hell is Hero going to hold on to this one? That's going to be a good question. That probe line's about to be very quickly annihilated. Nice little bit of sentry play right there. And he wants to try and keep that photon cannon alive. That's his priority here. He's able to protect that as best he can. And now those Ling's thinking, hmm, where am I going to go? Where am I going to go? Ooh, he's looking for the wall off there. And he's able to create a wall off and take a couple of Ling's out as well. Some really nice defense coming in here. More Ling's on the way here from Fairy. Because, well, what other choice does he really have at this point? He's so far behind already. And Hero guards the pylon with the lives of the probes. They form an impenetrable wall, Spartan style, and hold the breach. The question is, does he have enough probes to hold it? It's just a single photon cannon piling away at all of those lings here. And the sentry was holding them off for the longest time. Oh, nice placement to deny the attacks from that direction. Probes will hold. Spartans will hold this line. Placing a force field directly on top of the photon cannon, but it does go down finally, and that's a lot of lings that have been bled off there, but Hero actually still has a massive economic lead. He kept a lot of those probes alive. Ten probes killed. You'd think that a lot more would be. Now the question is, what does he do from here? Well, it looks like he's going to try and take these out with nothing but sentries. The Nidus Worm will go down very, very rapidly. Another photon cannon being put into position here. And now with that pylon finally removed, he is able to expand, but... My god, he's taking a lot of damage in the process. Hero now supply blocked and lost a lot of his production as well. Those pylons have been shut down and the Nexus taken out as well. Those Ling's doing as much damage as they can. But he is still on this base and his opponent hasn't actually expanded yet. Certainly something to consider. Well, more production facilities taken out and it's going to be all sentry all the time right here. Tries to block that off, but unfortunately it doesn't work out. A Zealot in the mix as well and Hero not actually microing there, but he doesn't really need to. MVP is finally running out of forces as you can see here. God, I call them MVP again. It's not MVP. It's fairy MVP. It's like MVP only in doll form, but playing Zerg. And there we go. The expansion finally up right there. And my, oh my, ladies and gentlemen, what a silly game this has been up to this point. Hero doing as much damage as he can, trying to uh, get rid of the rest of those units. And he should be able to do it, including the space out. And honestly, in terms of the amount of damage he's taken, it's not that bad. Admittedly, he's going to have to play catch-up with the double hatchery, which could be quite unpleasant. In fact, it's going to be triple hatchery. We've got another expansion coming down here for Fairy. The question is, will Hero be able to do anything about it? Roach is on the way up here for Fairy as well, and there's the Nexus going back up. But that's the real problem with Protoss, isn't it? If you want to try and keep up with Zerg, you've got to be chrono boosting on both of your Nexus, and he only has one Nexus to chrono boost from. More Lings moving in, now finally getting Link speed, perhaps the latest time in a pro game I've ever seen. The 11 minute mark right there. Pressure's not actually going to work here. Hero is safely walled off, so he doesn't really have to worry too much about that. And I don't know. I have to wonder if MVP's investment was really worth it. He is playing catch up at the moment. His tech path was interesting to say the least, but he does have layer tech and he's got a few options here. And of course, get, start getting roaches and roach upgrades to try and bust his way through, which is probably the best thing he could do. Or he could attempt to Nidus his opponent once again. If he gets in there with roaches this time around, it could be absolutely devastating. Looks out picked off there by Fairy. And there's the expansion now scouted. Twilight Council on the way for Hero. This may be a funky transition into DT. Could, of course, be Blink Stalker as well. Oh, I have to wonder if Hero believes he's behind here. He's certainly behind in terms of the number of bases. There's no real doubt about that. But in reality, MVP... Oh, God! <laughs> Why?! <laughs> Fairy! Face name is Fairy! It's not MVP! Uh, fairy? Mm-hmm. Has played a lot of economic catch-up. Currently, the drone count is equal to the probe count, and yes, it will be a funky Dark Templar. And I suppose that was kind of to be expected. Now, notice that Fairy does not actually... Ha oh, never mind, he has an Evo Chamber. I was going to say, he does not have any Spore Crawlers, however. So he's not guarded against this potential transition. However, this Overseer might end up... Yeah, it does end up seeing the Twilight Council. He does also see the Twilight Council actually 
Uh, that must have been a cancel right there. Yes, indeed it was. Now re researching Blink Stalker instead. I have to wonder if he'll then follow up with uh, another Dark Templar Shrine, and that's exactly what he does. So he cancels the DT Shrine. I think he managed to do that before he was actually scouted as well. And then rebuilds the DT Shrine. There's been no reaction yet, but there you go. Fairy's going to put Spore Crawler down, and there's a second because, hey, he's seen the Twilight Council. What did he see there? He didn't actually see the DT Shrine. That was cancelled before that happened. And in the meantime, Hero's going to have to break his way through this, unfortunately, take out his warp gate. In order to make his way out. In the meantime, Fairy holding on to map control. These DTs could potentially be dangerous. If he's able to take out the Spore Crawler, which he can do, especially if he goes out there with an actual army as opposed to just using DTs purely for harassment purposes, then he can do immense damage here. Small force coming out right here from Hero. MVP has a much... <laughs> Fairy has a much larger army. This is going to happen this entire game, isn't it? This is going to ha be how this is played out. More roaches on the way up as well, and now trying to secure another expansion, and this is kind of the time where Fairy can just say, you know what, I'm just going to turn the heat on now. So, this DT harassment is going to have to be pretty damn good. Unless, of course, he decides to go Archon, which would be a curious choice having not gone for charge. But I guess we'll find out momentarily. No, nope, it will be DTs. All right, now the question is, is it Scout? There's a borrowed Zergling right there. It's not going to see a damn thing. Unless, of course, he happens to be looking at that point in the map at this very moment. Goldlings now moving in to maintain map control, but they will be cleaned out very easily by Hero's forces, and he's about to run right into a Spore Crawler. He sees that. have to wonder if Fairy saw that as well. Stalker, unfortunately, caught out of position and will be ravaged. Not in a good way. Another Stalker taken out. Nice little surround there by Fairy. In the meantime, what do you do when they come for you? Well, he can't get in there. He also has no information about those borrowed roaches. He has no idea. There's a trap being set. DT just wandering around in the process, just stabbing away at those roaches. And there was an Archon Morph realizing, well, you know what? I can't get into the base. I can't do anything. He doesn't have any drop capability. He's about to just try and get some. He does also have Blink Stalkers, so there's harassment opportunities, but... Ugh. This is looking a bit grim right here for Hero. Fairy has a lot of units. Even after that initial problem with his economy, the Nidus response seemed to be enough. And now there's a big force of roaches moving over here, and I have to wonder, well, what does Hero do from this point? He's got such a small army. He's going to have to divide and conquer immensely well here. There's the force fields placed up, and a good little trap. Roach blocked out of position. A couple more force fields, and force fields are good. They very much are. He takes a little bit of damage, but does a lot more to a fairy, but fairy's just going to turn on the heat right now. He's got Hydra Den coming up as well, and Roach Hydra is extremely effective there. Missed Force Field there. Could have cost him, but he are actually taking so little damage here. However, Tunneling Roaches are now on the field, so these Force Fields are going to be significantly less effective. And once the Hydras are added into the mix, well, Gateway units tend to melt. He's also got plus one, which is something that I... Oh, in fact, never mind. He's actually up against plus two. Been going on in the background there. Still looking at 168 supply versus 125. Bear in mind that roaches do sink an awful lot of that, but still, it's looking somewhat grim in that respect. That's the army supply count, but Hero is closing the gap and is also adding immortals in. Not quite enough to make a huge difference as of yet, but he does have a lot of cannons there, so that's going to hold for the time being. So unfortunately, he's not able to do any harassment here. Perhaps the most unfortunate thing, bearing in mind that this base is now up. He doesn't have the capability. Overseer scouts and determines what's going on. And Fairy's still a little bit cautious. He does have 50 roaches. He's not what he needs to actually go in there. And in fact, he needs to start doing that sooner rather than later. But it's a really awkward engagement point. Very easily divided by force field. It's a very easy area to defend here. And in the meantime, Fairy tried to uh, poke just a little bit. Stalker picked off quite nicely. A couple of missed force fields. Fairy, fairy, fairy. Continuing to build up his force. And now he's on 200. Also looking for ventral sacks as well. He dropped right into the main and completely destroyed this choke point. Once again, fairy going for it. But sliced into pieces. 
Good force field placement right here, and good blink micro. Excellent stuff. Hopping up onto the top there, and as it turns out, Fairy actually doesn't have visibility, so he can't go anywhere near that. The reinforcements as they come past will be picked off quite easily. Tunneling Roach is coming in. He's got the visibility, and force field's deployed and right into the center here. Hero's actually holding this quite nicely. He's rebuilding very well indeed. The Immortal stays alive for the moment, and there's no answer to these stalkers up on the ridge either. He can't shoot them. Hydralisks being picked off at one after another as they come in. My concern is that these ventral sacks are going to change the face of this battle here. Now, if we have a look at the state of the economy, it's currently looking pretty rosy. Fairy spent an awful lot of resource into units and hasn't been able to break the defenses right here of Hero. Hero needs a good engagement, he knows it. Having a good engagement with the Roaches is tricky, bearing in mind that they have a very, very small range, but when you add a Lings and some Hydras into the mix, things start to get a little bit more unpleasant. Ventral Sacks are going to be available very, very shortly as well, and Hero ramming his way through here to look for yet another expansion protected by this wall of photon cannons, and Hero now almost maxed up as well. A 60 supply deficit early in the game has proven not to be too much of an obstacle here for Hero, and he remains in the game with a strong economy. His forces are looking very nice as well, as are his upgrades. He does have an upgrade lead on his opponent here. In fact, by the looks of it, indeed, he'll have plus three before plus two even triggers. Now the question is, can he get a good engagement right here? Here comes the Blink Stalkers and the Immortal taking a lot of fire at the front, but doing a significant amount of damage before it goes down, forcing a Burrow away and taking more losses. The Immortal lives. The Immortal living up to its name, as you can tell. Fairy puts its name to the test, but Hero holds in the center. Yet more units coming in, a large number of Hydralists, but the Stalkers should be able to deal with that without too much of a problem, especially with some amazing Blink Micro management. Look at this! Hero takes barely any damage whatsoever, crushes the force in the center, and now pushes all the way through. So unbelievable play right here by Hero, a mass blink because he knows it, he can smell some blood, and Fairy drops below 150. Oh my, Hero with an amazing counter push coming on right now. This is some crazy play. Now if he's able to divide that army down the middle, he can take the third and the fourth base. Looking for an engagement right here as Fairy tries to rebuild, but he actually doesn't have a large enough army. Blink stalkers all over the place right here for Hero. Losing bare minimal units. So incredibly good right here from Hero. As Fairy takes a pounding. And honestly, I don't think he can hold up against this. I don't think he's got the army for it. Falls to 120. Hero continues to reinforce. More units streaming across the map. Right here, a warp prison to be added in. Templar archives, doesn't matter. GG, ladies and gentlemen. And the game goes to Hero. What a phenomenal display. Oh, wow.